We're going to be playing Hour of Devastation Limited for the next few months, and with release weekend mostly done, we've done extensive testing with this new draft format. In this video, I'm going to show you the best commons and uncommons in each color, so that when you open this rare, or this one, or Nyx forbid this one, you actually know what else to take. This video is about showing you the best commons and uncommons, the ones you should first pick. Not all good commons and uncommons, that's a much longer list. This is the best of the best, let's do this thing. We'll begin with white and commons and move from there as we always do. As some of you may have already guessed, Desert's Hold is my absolute favorite white uncommon for limited. It's basically removal. Can attack, block, or activate abilities. And if you have a desert on the battlefield or in your graveyard, you gain some life. Now, that desert clause isn't why this card is the best white uncommon, but it's important to point out that the Desert's Matter cards are much better than originally thought. You can get enough deserts in this limited format for that to matter, and when you do, they are impressive to say the least. Deserts hold solid removal, amazing card. The next best white and common is definitely Steward of Solidarity. There were a few other contenders, but not really. Steward of Solidarity lets you create a 1-1 with Vigilance every other turn. I know that doesn't seem like much, but in case you didn't notice, this limited format is much slower than average. Over time, you're going to amass tokens with this thing, and if you can get some exert synergy with untap effects, even better. You can't ignore creature generation like this. It's quite strong. It's certainly first pickable. As for white commons, there are only two I want to mention, Dauntless Aven and Sandblast. I talked Dauntless Aven up in the pre-release guide, but I didn't do it justice. This could be one of the best commons in the entire set, just totally unreal. It can untap itself on attack, it can untap exerted creatures, and it's a flyer with two power, three mana. Dauntless Aven is absurd as a common, much better than I thought it would be, and I already thought it would be good. Sandblast, it's removal, high quality instant speed removal, and 5 damage is going to kill most creatures you care about in this format. I had wonderful results with it, definitely worth a high pick. Also it's important to note that white does have a pretty deep pool of solid commons. Avon of Enduring Hope, Aketra's Avenger, and even the Desert Camel are all solid. I don't want to first pick them, but solid depth here, it's important to remember. Moving on to the blue uncommons, the best is Ominous Sphinx by far, nothing else is even close. I said it before and I'll say it again, 5 mana 4-4 four, four flyers are just good, they are. Almost nothing can beat this thing in the air, and it has some synergy with cycled and discarded cards. Regardless of the trigger, best blue uncommon by far. Next up is Sinuous Striker, mainly because the eternalized version of the Striker is stupidly powerful. I've played with it a few times now and the power is just beyond ridiculous. Being a 4-4 with that kind of ability, easy to punish opponents with a poor board position, makes a great blocker at 4-4, can pump to trade with anything, versatile and oppressive, even with discarding being a part of the eternalized cost at 10 out of 10. Blue commons are not good. The best two are Aerial Guide and Unquenchable Thirst. Aerial Guide is three mana for a solid flyer that grants evasion to another attacking creature. That's just good, especially in aggressive decks or if you're in a game where a board stall seems to be imminent. Unquenchable Thirst? I'm sure many of you will disagree because of the untapped synergies in this format, but I promise you, this is still good a lot of the time. Not everyone is running untapped spells, and even if they are, you're forcing them to use those spells to get their card back for a turn. It may not be 100% removal like the blue tap down spells of the past, but it is more than adequate and it comes with desert synergy in case you have that going on. Maybe you used it and someone had an untapped spell for the creature you put it on, but this is going to do more good than harm for you overall, I promise. Black uncommons are alright. I'd say that Bane Whip Punisher is in a league of its own. 3 mana for a 2-2 is boring, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to shrink something, and then when you don't need the Punisher anymore, you get to sacrifice it to take something down. That's removal on a body. You're getting everything you want. You get board presence, you get to reduce a creature's threat level, and you get to throw this thing away when you absolutely need to. Bane Whip Punisher is the best black uncommon, not close. Now, a cursed horde and merciless eternal, both of them are fine. The horde synergizing with itself is all you need to make that card good, the more zombies the better of course, and merciless eternal is a constant threat. At least 2 damage coming in no matter what, and when they block you can force the issue by discarding. Both strong, but not Bane Whip Punisher strong. The average power of black commons is higher on average than some of the other colors, but the best black commons are exactly what you'd expect. We're talking removal. Lethal Sting and Torment of Venom. Yes, putting a minus one, minus one counter on your own creature can be bothersome sometimes, but this is solid, non-toughness based removal. It's one of the most consistent removal spells in the format, and you have to prioritize it when drafting. 
Torment of Venom is probably my favorite removal spell out of Hour of Devastation. Not only do you get minus three, minus three at instant speed, but you also get to bolt your opponent unless they sack a non-land or discard a card. You're probably removing a creature and then either getting a card out of their hand, getting a permanent from them, or bolting them. How is that not all great for you? Sure, they get to decide which they want, but even forcing a discard has value for you. Think about the amount of discard matters cards in the set. Torment lets you drain their resources. Torment is amazing. I cannot talk this card up enough. I love it to undeath. Moving into red uncommons, I think it's pretty safe to say that red just has the best uncommon suite in the entire set, hands down, not close. My favorite uncommon is a braid, because this is two mana at instant speed to bolt a creature. And it has the flexibility for the rare instance when you need to bomb a robot. This is the best red uncommon, it just is. After that, my second favorite is absolutely Burning Fist Minotaur. This thing is stupid. If you've played with it already, you know what I'm talking about. It drops early in blanks, most of the two drops in the format, not all but most. Two first strike damage is incredibly difficult to get through, and even if they use some type of combat trick to get above two toughness, you have that insanely cheap pump ability. Plus two power is already impactful, but adding it onto a creature that has first strike, it goes so much further for you. It does so much more work. Burning Fist Minotaur is the cream of the crop 2-drop. Now, the other two red uncommons I feel like I have to mention are Manticore Eternal and Fervent Paincaster. I believe both of these are first pick worthy, especially if your rare is crap. I don't think they're as good as the two previously covered red uncommons, but like I said, red uncommons have a ton of depth and these two should not be discounted. The Manticore just wins games on its own and the Paincaster ends up oppressing anything with one toughness, even with Exert, both are great. I gotta say, red is sweet in the set, Bolas is represented well, red commons are also super deep. Open fire is the best of the bunch because believe it or not, dealing 3 damage at instant speed is real good. You get flexibility between player and creature and you get it at instant speed, it's versatile, classic removal, gotta prioritize it above all other red commons. Similarly, Puncturing Blow performed amazingly well. Not only are you taking down something huge, if it's something with a graveyard-based ability, you get to ruin your opponent's day by exiling it. A small added benefit, but it's a benefit nonetheless. It is sorcery speed and double red, which is unfortunate, but 5 damage kills most creatures in the format, and again, that clause is nothing to forget about. Now, Frontline Devastator, that's the best red common creature. I don't believe it's close. 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three with a flick 2 that fire breathes? I'll take Frontline Devastators early and often forever. High quality creature with no downside and a million upsides. High priority pick, especially when games go late and you can pump more than once. Last thing about red, if you have deserts, Sand Strangler becomes the best card in your deck if you can get it. If you don't have deserts, don't play it. Obviously, but if you do, instant first pickable. Green is another contender for colors with the best uncommons. We'll begin with Overcome because this is a Windmill Slam game winner. I won with it multiple times, got wrecked by it multiple times. Remember, this limited format isn't the fastest. I'm sure you've already seen your fair share of board stalls or board clogs. Overcome on a board stall, you win the game right there, it's just over. Over one was broken, overcome is a little bit fairer, but not really. This is the best green uncommon. I take it early and count on it to win your games when you need that extra push. It's just a real powerful spell, the thing first pick uncommons are made of. Next up, Devotee of Strength and Sifter Worm. Why? Because games go late and these cards are mana sinks that end games. Not only does Devotee have a late game ability that will eventually win you your match, but it's a 3-2 for 3 on its own. That's just fine right there. It doesn't even need the ability to be a 22nd or 23rd card. But being able to mana dump into the late game, it changes the flow of an entire match. You have inevitability. You decide when to go all in. Your opponent has to factor in this one card into every decision they make. It's just a nightmare. Now speaking of nightmares, Sifter Worm, come on. A 7-7 for 7 mana with Trample, Scry 3, and Life Gain, come on. We all knew this was going to be on this list, and it should be. If we're talking utility and power, there's no other creature in the set that matches it, at least at common or uncommon. Sifter Worm is everything you want, and you'll be able to cast it in most games since, again, this format takes a little bit. First pick worthy for sure, no question. All that's left, green commons, and this is real easy for me. Ambuscade stands front and center. Removal is always at a premium, but in green, it's like finding a diamond. Ambuscade not only lets you remove a creature, but you don't even have to fight it. It's at instant speed, and your creature gets a power boost. You can use this during combat on your opponent's turn. It's so versatile. That one power could change the course of a combat phase while also letting you destroy something else. 
what a two for one this ends up being. MG Skate is on the border of common slash uncommon. It has to be. It's the best green common. By far, not close. Now, after we move beyond Ambuscade, it's really a toss-up. I'd say the next three to four commons are pretty close. Personally, I think Bitterbow Sharpshooters is a fantastic card. That thing is a house, and it can blank flyers like there's no tomorrow. Also, having four power and toughness in this format is a good place to be. Adding Vigilance onto that is just gravy. Personally, the Jackal Archer is my second favorite green common, but there's an argument to be made for Ronas' Stalwart. It is a 2-mana two 2-2, two, two, but exerting to a 3-3 three, three and having mini unblockable is quite strong. It's much better early game than late game, so that might be why I favor the Sharpshooters, but it's a coin flip. I'd rather first pick Ambuscade every time, though. And that's going to do it for the Hour of Devastation Draft Guide. Now, obviously, there were many other playable commons and uncommons. We used this video to tell you which commons and uncommons are the best to first pick. If a card was left off, that doesn't mean it isn't good, just means we don't want to first pick it, that's all. So what do you think? How have your limited experiences been so far? Which cards have been all-stars for you? Be sure to leave a comment down below and we'll talk about it. More information is always better. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGBlair.com. Hour of Devastation is now out, which means that if you want the set, you can buy it and get it shipped to you right the second, right now. Best part? You can get boxes of the new set, not even joking, for $85 each right now. $85. When was the last time a standard set was this cheap? Dragon's Maze? It's just insanity. If you want boxes at bottom barrel prices, we got your back right here. Just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel. We all win. Enjoy.